I won't give up on God because He won't give up on me. I won't give up on God. I won't give up on no God. No matter what you say, because He no won't give what you do. up on me. Hey, say I won't give up on God. I won't give up on God because He won't give up on me. Say don't give up. Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to your name, God.
God a hand praise today. Amen. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Come on, come on. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for the eager attitude, the eager mindset of what he wants to do in and to and through your life. You've got to believe you're stronger. Believe that you are not a weak individual. Believe that God has given you more to utilize in your life. You must believe this. And then watch God begin to transform your mind, your thoughts, and your actions. He wants you to realize, I believe. I believe. I believe. He called me something bigger. I believe that. I'm going to walk in that as well as God give me strength and peace and power. Come on, give God a hand, praise and thanks this morning. Oh, I believe. I didn't see the eagle today. Did the eagle miss today? Can you see that? Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. I'm th- hey, I didn't see him, but my, I know he's here. <laughs> I know he's here. We honor him today. We thank God for his son, Jesus, and we appreciate the gift of the Holy Ghost, don't we? Come on, amen. We appreciate the wonderful staff here, GFT, ministerial staff. Thank God for each of the wonderful evangelists, children, brothers this morning. God bless each of the wonderful trustees and deacons, ushers and greeters. And to all of you today, our Lord's people, it's good to be here today in God's house. Come on, amen. amen. Give God a hand praise for today. We praise God for those that are bringing us today by internet. We are streaming live this morning. Hey, what's up with you? Amen. Stay tuned to us. I promise you this word you're going to help you today in your everyday life. And also, we are also on Facebook Live this morning. God bless. Amen. amen. Yes, here we are, here we are, here we are. Let's praise God for AJ today. Come on, amen. Yes, yes, yes. She hung around last night, so I guess she's back again today. She hung around last night. So thank God she's here. Amen. Thank God she's here. She hung around with us. Listen, it's such a joy today to be here and to share with you what God has placed in my heart. And as we heard on last week, some things took place with regarding the eagle and those things. And this is a sermon that I began to develop actually in October of last year. And those who were here with me then, I said to you guys that I would bring this sermon back to you in January, and that's what God has just done. While away on that time of my, my being secluded, I was able just to do some, some real, real study of some things regarding the eagle, what the eagle does, and how that eagle just has a, a, a wonderful fascination with things, and how God associates us with the eagle. That baffled me because I couldn't understand exactly how it is that God is trying his best to show us that we are like the eagle. So the eagle is just like the lion that's in the, the jungle. It is said that the lion is king of the jungle. Nothing, nothing, nothing intimidates the lion. Even, even the elephant. Nothing intimidates the lion. Well, guess what? In the air, nothing intimidates the eagle. And look what God is trying to show you as a metaphor. Look what he's trying to, look what he's trying to associate with you with, with you with. Look how God is trying to show the resemblance of you and the eagle. So it speaks to me loudly, and I trust over the course of this series, you're going to hear yourself as well. Begin to say, you know what? I'm not a chicken. (laughs) I'm not a pigeon. I'm not a turkey. And I'm an eagle. Okay, man, I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle. I'm an eagle, and eagles just don't come to town. Eagles don't play around. Eagles do what they do because eagles realize there is so much more life than what meets the eye. We'll get more involved in just a few minutes. I want you to grasp it today that just as the lion is on the earth, the eagle is in the air. Nothing intimidates the eagle. And if you're an eagle, You should not let a job, an individual, or anything intimidate you. 
if you're an eagle. If you're a chicken, I got that. If you're a pigeon, I got that. If you're a pigeon, I got it. Cornelius, I got it. If you're a pigeon, you're going to be a little bit, yeah, shaky. But if you're an eagle, nothing intimidates the eagle. No, it's, this is going to be fascinating, believe me, as we get involved in it. In the book of Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter in verse 11, I want to show you again how God begins to show how he wants us to show the resemblance of who we are as Christians, as people chosen of him, how we are in his eyes. Look what he says in Deuteronomy, the 32nd chapter in verse 11. Let's read together, come on. As an eagle stirs up its nest, who was over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up and carry them on its wings. Just ask that. We, we, we get a lot more than that. But, but, but just, just think about it. He says, as the eagle stirs this. So he's alluding to there are some things about how he is using you and I that shows exactly what an eagle does in their nest. He's trying to show you in simple forms of how we may see things in the earth, how God does us in the spiritual. There's a level, Rico, we should get to in knowing that we're eagles and you're not just a chicken. So you don't mind saying your neighbor, neighbor? Hashtag. The nest is getting it's becoming rather it's becoming uncomfortable the nest is becoming uncomfortable oh and then my second piece of that was hashtag eagles don't come to town this is my bible my sword my life I believe what it says about me. I am strong. I am the head. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. I am more than a conqueror. Today, I will be taught how to walk by faith. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Sit down, eagles. We must continue in Deuteronomy 2 and 24. It's imperative that we get what God was saying to Israel and that you and I must understand the marching orders that God is giving us. These were marching orders. These were words that he was giving Israel to move ahead. So look at this again, Deuteronomy 2 and 24 25. Rise, take your journey, cross over the river Arnon, look, open your eyes and look. I have given into your hands Sion the Amorite, king of Heshbon, and his land, began to possess it and engage him in battle. Look what God's saying. God said, hey, listen, listen, rise up. And there are too many of us who are just sitting still and not making a move as God has given you opportunities and also intellect on how to move. It's a shame that we sit and just let life pass us by without recognizing how God wants to utilize your life. And I think that this is the word God gave for this month of January. Rise up. Take your journey. Come on, amen. We see the New Year's being something that's special. God lives in eternity, but he sang this morning, rise, take your journey, cross over something. Amen. Something that you may not have thought about in the past, but you realize that I should be stepping out and stepping over. I need to rise up and go over this trial, this temptation, this thing that has me intimidated. Rise up, take your journey, go over. Over the river of Arnon. River in the case, water in the case that it could be sometimes a difficult swim for you. But he said this morning, rise and get over it. 
Go over and see what God has for you. Because guess what? You're going to meet somebody, and it's not all going to be a piece of green. You're going to meet Sion, the Amorite, king of Heshbon. And this guy is in the land. But guess what? Look, I have given you something. Possess the land. Possess it. Engage in battle. You will not be defeated. Oh, man, I like that right there. If you just step out, you will not be defeated. If you just go ahead and take your journey, you will not be defeated. Look at verse 25. And then he says this to us. This day I begin to put the dread of fear of you upon the nation on the whole heaven. Who shall hear the report of you and shall tremble and be in anguish? Why? Because of you. God is only saying this. Don't let anyone intimidate you. I'm going to put the dread of who you are in them. When they see you coming, they may look like they ain't scared, but they scared. Eh? Because what? Because they see who you are. They see there's something about you that they don't have. And so God is saying, get up and go and take it. Today, I put the dread of who you are in them. They're going to be tempted of you. Oh, my God. Again, these are what? These are marching orders. He didn't ask you, do you want to rise up? No, no. He said, rise. Take your journey. In other words, these are marching orders. These, this is a mandate. It is a command, get up and go. And I believe there's a reason God gave this sermon for us today in this time of your life. It wasn't as if God was giving them an option. No, 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 no. Jack and Ellis, it was not an option. He was saying, get up and do it. And there are too many of us, again, who sat here and did not move. I said last week, I realized this sermon is not for everyone. I got that. I got that. I realize some of you guys are going to sit here regardless if I talk until I am 95. You guys are going to stay where you are. You're not going to accept what I'm saying. you just where you are, and that's all I'm going to do right there, Pastor. I just can't see myself doing it. Well, that's fine. I, hey, you, you, are, you stay, stay there. All I want to do is go to heaven. That's all I want to do, but I said go to heaven. All right, that's fine. But there are many of us who are saying, I came to church today to get a word from God that's going to set my life on a new direction. I need help for today. I'm trying to find my way. I know I'm here on this earth for a purpose. Let me find out what God is calling me to do. That's why I'm here. That's why I came here. So I'm going to take this word and utilize it for what God gave me for. That's why I came. I got you. Maybe you didn't come for that. I got you. You came to look and to see and all that stuff. No, I came to get some direction. So where was, where was God telling them to go? Where? Where is God telling you to go? Come on, Renee, I got you. What is God telling you? Where was God telling Israel to go? To possess the land. And there's something in your life that he's saying, go get it. Go get it. Come on, Craig Murray. Go get it. Go get it. Why do we just sit back and let life just kind of pass us by? Oh, come on, amen. Are you hearing me? It's, it's a shame. The enemy has had possession of your stuff long enough. This is why he said, rise, take your journey, and go and fight for what you know you, is yours. Your mind is yours. Your body is yours. I'm not going to let you just take my mind, my body, and just act like I'm not even existing. No, I know I'm better than what you think I am. I know I can live better. I know I can act better. I know I'm better than that. No, I'm not going to just accept where I am right now. I told you last week about out-of-the-box thinking. Too many of us think, think in the box. Someone gave me a gift two years ago. 
And it's a gift of a, of a guy sitting outside of a box. And they said to me years ago, they said, you are, are an out-of-the-box thinker. And you just touch that little, that little man and he rocks outside the box. That's what it says. It says, thinking outside the box. And I promise you, darling sirs, if you don't learn to think outside the box, you will begin to become just as status quo as your friends who you're around. Because the crap mentality exists in the land. You try to get up, they try to pull you back down. No, just get out the same pond they're in. No, it's wrong. I'm in the wrong pond. No, 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 no. That's, this is the wrong pond. I've got to get to a pond where people won't see me go up. That's why eagles don't come to town. Y'all kind of quiet. Out of box thinking. Before God, before God can move, you got to believe that God can do anything. Come on, God can do what? The impossible. God can do the impossible. That's what's called out of the box thinking. It's doing something that is impossible. If it's possible, then you don't need God. But when it is impossible, this is when God is saying, let me handle it. You are calling on me now for help. So let me handle it. It's the impossible that God works in. Listen, this is my proof text. Talk about think out the box. This guy here, check this out. Who would even think like this? No one except someone who believes that God can't do anything. Check this guy out. Check this dude out. Joshua, the 10th chapter. Watch what this guy. This is, this is what I call out of the box thinking. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the, the Lord delivered up the Amorites for the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, Stand still. Oh! Ah. Are y'all hearing that? Are y'all hearing this? That the Bible says that this guy, Joshua, had the nerve, the audacity to say to God, God, son, stand still. That's what you call out of the box thinking. That's just not normal. No one thinks like that. And too many of us are just status quo thinkers. We're not out of the box thinkers. And we sit back and accept status quo. But Joshua had the nerve. This dude said, God, let the sun stand still. Y'all missed that part. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. We're talking about out of the box thinking. Talk about a God that can do the impossible. Talk about a God that we can believe in and know that if he said it, he can do it. Sun, stay still over Gibeon and moon in the valley of Angelon. Oh my God. Did God do it? Did God do it? Let's read and find out. Look at verse, look at verse 13. And the Bible says this. So the sun stole. But the guy had the nerve to even ask God. Why did God just do it? Guess what? Because you have not, because you ask not. If you don't ask God for something, then how does God, how oh, you don't hear me? I know God knows what you need, but God tells you, say, ask for what you will. You sit back and ask, but you ask because you don't really believe what you're asking for. You slap God in the face when you ask and you don't believe what you're asking for. The sun stood still. The moon stopped. <laughs> Man, I saw that thing. When I, I started writing seven hours. I saw that thing. I saw that sun. I saw, I saw the sun say, what? And the moon said, if you don't move, I can't. <laughs> ah, moon is the lesser light. Sun is the greater light. If you don't move, I can't. Uh, and this is what God's saying. God's saying, I'm the great light, but if you don't move, I can't move. Mm. Hey, till the people had revenge on their enemies. So this, this not written in the book of Asia. So the sun stood still in the midst of heaven and did not hasten to go down for about a whole day. 
<laughs> it did it didn't move for a whole day. And then in the last three, four years ago, I, I was doing some research and found out that there are scientists who have begun to retract some things and he said, you know what? We can see where some time was lost in the earth. Which indicate what? That Connell, the Bible is a truth. That the world, the sun, did stop. Which meant what? Now, we know that sun does not go down. It's the earth that's moving. But just like you didn't know some things, uh, back at that time, they was writing the Bible, they, they, they thought too the sun was moving. But the earth was rotating, right? So, so guess what? The earth just stood still. Man, tell somebody, God is real. Verse 14, a whole day. And then the Bible says this. The Bible says, and there, were, and there has not been no day like that before it or after it that the Lord heeded to the voice of man and fought for the Israelites. Talk about out of the box thinking. What made him ask that question? What made him challenge God? You got to challenge God. You've got to ask God for things that seem impossible. This dude, Joshua, asked God to hold the sun in place. That's what I call out of the box thinking. And some of y'all are afraid to ask God for your pen. <laughs> Don't want to ask him for a car. And here's a man that said, I'm going to ask God to stop the moon and stop the sun. Oh, man, y'all so quiet. Who does that? Who, do who does that? Except someone who believes that God can do anything. Oh, come on, man. God is telling someone here today, think about that this is what you say sometimes. There's no way. No, ain't no way. God likes that no way thinking. <laughs> ain't no way. Ain't no way. You know ain't no way. Ain't no way that can happen. Ain't no way that I can get that kind of salary. Ain't no way I can buy that kind of house. Ain't no way I can get that kind of car. Ain't no way I can get my health back. Ain't no way. Take your neighbor, neighbor, no, 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 there's a way. If you can believe, all things are possible. Oh, my God, my God, my God. I got somebody to believe me. Are you hearing me? Are you hearing me? You can tell everyone your thinking especially you can't tell rather you can't tell everyone you're thinking especially if it's out of the box you don't hear what Joshua even engaged with his other comrades and said nothing about I want to talk to God first about something no 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 you cannot engage the conversation with folks because folk don't see what you see and so it's important when it's out of the box thinking, I can't involve you because you don't believe like I believe. I believe that God can do anything. I believe that. So I can't ask you because flesh and blood I doubt God, but I know what God, hey, I know what God can do. David said, I killed a lion on one level and a bear on another level. That don't mean to me. I realize that I can't tell nobody what God can do because you don't believe like I believe. Oh, my Lord, I feel my help. Oh, come on. It's out of the box. Heal me, God. Deliver me, God. Bless me, God. Bless me. Bless me. I'm not asking nobody to join me. Just God bless me. Heal me. Deliver me. You can't be healed. No, I can't do. That's out of the way. That's out of the box. That's just no way thinking God can heal my body. Don't care what the doctor told you. Yeah. 
I told you about my wife years ago with so she had some condition in her body and I went to get her master that night I'm thinking you know I mean this is back in in 80 84, 85 I was really young, I was very young then I was like I, I told y'all she robbed the crater, she robbed the crater and I went and got I went and got the medicine I went to the pharmacist and the pharmacist told me, says, this medicine is, is costing, was it seven or three dollars? One, seven dollars, seven dollars, seven dollars, seven dollars a pill. I said, what'd you say? Seven dollars a pill? Yeah, seven, it's, it's, yeah, your wife got some condition, man, that uh, uh, she's in pain and this is, this medication is for the rest of her life. I called her from the pharmacist. Are you in some pain? She said, no, not, not like that. I said, sir, give me seven pills. He wanted me to buy 30, which was $210. I said, give me seven pills, and we won't be back. I can't tell all y'all the faith I have. Because y'all won't believe it. I came home and told my better half. I came home and told her, hey, darling, we are one. Tell you right now, take these seven, and from this day forth, you'll never have that condition again. And she went back to her gynecologist, and he told her, said, what happened? The law. We're talking out-of-the-box thinking. You just can't accept what they tell you. No. Come on. Listen. This is not a drive through faith. Y'all get it tomorrow. This is not a drive through faith. What's a drive through faith? Like drive through prayer. You just drive through the line, get a prayer, and go up to business. No, 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 no. Faith is a commitment. It's a lifestyle. You live this life. You don't just come in here and say, I got it now because I, I, I rubbed shoulders against him. No! The just shall live by faith. Oh, he thought y'all just come. Your thinking is crucial. You get me? Get your name, girl, back back over here. You, you, you get me? Your thinking is crucial. Cornelius is crucial. What you think on continuously, get this, you become. Think of all the stuff that's after your thoughts. All the stuff that's after your thoughts. When the devil came to Eve, he was after her thoughts. I can prove it. Are you hearing me? It's called the power of suggestion. Satan will plant a seed. That seed germinates and starts to grow in your mind. And the thought process takes place. And before long, you begin to think like that. Think I can't be healed. Think that I can't have a better job. Think that I will be able to make it. Listen, you must evaluate a thought once you think it. You must evaluate a thought once you think it. Are you hearing me? That's why I explained the other week. To always practice thinking through what your mind accepts easily. Always practice thinking through what your mind accepts easily. Are you hearing me? Because your mind would accept easy some stuff that's not right. You must cast out thoughts that are not right. Thoughts that don't line up with the word of God. Catch those thoughts out. So always practice. Practice. Thinking through what your mind accepts. Are you hearing me? Listen. Your mind may say, hey. Get that woman. That's not your wife. Get that man. That's not your husband. Get that money. That's not your money. 
steal that pen off the, off the shelf at the job. That's not your... Uh, but your mind said, get it. They got plenty of them. <laughs> Notice what the devil told Eve. Notice. In essence, he said this. God is holding something back from you. And God is hiding something from you. This is what he tells you too, that God is hiding something from you. He's a liar. He's a liar. I got proof. Let me show you something here. Genesis 3, 1 through 5. This is what happened. Now the serpent was more cunning, more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, has God indeed said you shall not eat every tree of the garden? Look, 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 look. He's playing a thought. He's playing a thought in your mind. Did, did God really say that you cannot drink? Did God say you could not smoke? I'm, did God, did God, did, is that in the Bible? No, he's planning. He's planning. Verse 3, verse, verse 2, verse 2. And the woman said to the servant, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Read. But the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God says, you shall eat it, nor shall you touch it, you shall die. And then verse 4 says this, he says, hey. And the serpent says, this, the woman says, you won't die, girl. <laughs> seed. Satan is planting seeds in your head. Seeds that are against the word of God. Every thought that comes to your mind, you should take it in, and then dissect it before you let it grow. Come on, Jeremiah. Look what he says in verse 5. He said this. He says, for God knows, God knows that in the day that you eat, or eat of it, your eyes will open and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. So, so he says, he says, God is holding something back from you. That's all he's doing. He's holding something back from you. And you got nerve to believe what the devil's telling you. He's not holding nothing back from you. Listen, the only thing God was, was after with Eve, he wanted to do through Eve if she had just obeyed. He wanted to do things through Eve if she had just obeyed. Listen, God was going to expose everything to Adam and Eve had they obeyed. And the same thing for many of you. Many of you. So the Fogelman. Renee. Tiara. God is willing to expose everything to you. If you just obey him. The problem is that we're not obeying God. We have our own thing we're doing. Listen, conceit is the last emotion to leave you. Conceit means you think you are more than somebody else. You are better than somebody else. Conceit is the last emotion to leave you. Even being saved, it still has its place in your mind. That you are so much better. If you had just obeyed some of y'all today, and I know I'm talking to you. If you had just obeyed, God was going to expose everything about his plans to you. Listen, you are not missing out on nothing. I told one guy, part of the ministry years ago. He wanted to go here and there, everywhere. And he said, he said, God was calling me something, something different. I said, hold, man, hold, hold, hold. God knows your address. Some of y'all think y'all are so wonderful. Oh, come on. You are not missing nothing. When God created you, he had you on the workbook, workbench, putting in you all you are going to be, could be, should be. All 
the potential to be all God has desired is right in you now. And all you've got to do is obey. And everything else that God is going to do for you will come to pass if you just line up and obey. Stop trying to do your own thing and push your own way. Just obey what God is saying and God exposed the whole plan. Oh, I know you're going out. It's all right. I ain't mad at you. You're mad at me either. God is going to bring more of who you are out when you start thinking right. The way you think is the reason why you're not getting anywhere. My pen this morning says this. If I can change how you think, I can change what you do. Because you do what you think. Your thinking is crucial. I know God was talking to me when I wrote this here. So don't y'all. You get mad, get mad at the devil. Listen. It's a shame that he's trying to get one of you. It's your thinking. It's your thinking. Tell us about it. I've got to get my thinking right. I've got to get my thinking right. You know you're not, you know you're not thinking correctly. Come on. Amen. Look what Paul wrote. Paul wrote this in Philippians 4 and 8. Look what he says. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are loving, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue in them, and if there be any praise, do what? Now, I read all of those categories off for you, but I want you to get just the one, the first one. For so ever things are true. The truth is, can't nobody stop OJ but OJ. You get it tomorrow. The truth is, can't nobody stop OJ but OJ. It's what I think, it's how I think that stops me from moving forward. It's what I'm doing to stop me from getting what God has. It's how I'm reacting. My behavior is what I'm doing that's not allowing God to use me to his full potential. It's what I'm doing. And many of us, darling sirs, we are not being stopped by the white guy or the other guy. We are being stopped by our thinking. Oh, praise Jesus. Listen, you increase by truth, not by time. You'll get it later. You increase by truth, not by time. Some folk believe because I'm, oh, I'm here so long, and I've been in this thing so long, I've been saved so long, there's time. No, no, no. You increase by truth. The truth is, if you obey God, God got a plan for you. But as long as you want to just do what you want to do. Boy, they quiet today, God. Are you hearing me? Listen, I said the other week, you have to break out of the cycle, break out of the system. It's a system. Satan has put us in a system. And we get into the place now in this passage in the book of Deuteronomy where God is trying to kick you out of the system. Are you hearing me? I told you last week and I verified with scripture. The devil has no power over you. I showed you last week. The devil has no power over you. You give him power. Are you following me? I told you last week. The only thing Satan is controlling is the world system. That's all. Nothing but the world system. Satan wants to keep you on food stamps. He wants to keep you getting a little check you're getting. Because you're on that, that little job you got and you are comfortable. 
And God is saying, I'm trying to give you something more. But you're just so comfortable when you're staying where you are. So many people are just so comfortable in what they are because they know. They don't want to take another chance and try something else out different. They like where they are. Hmm. Look at this proof text. Satan tempting Jesus. We talked about this today in, in, in SDA this morning, uh, Dr. Rogers. And, and you might have you wondered, man, where you come with that from today? Well, it's because I studied this past week. Matthew, the fourth chapter, verses 8 and 9. Listen, 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 listen at how Satan is tempting. It's AMPC. AMPC. I want you to catch this. He says, again, the devil took him up on a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory and the splendor, the magnificence and the excellence of them. Verse 9. And he said to him, all these things I'll give you if you fall down and worship me. We're talking about the world system. And Satan took him up to show him the world, the cosmos. It's decorated. He showed him the world. And he said, hey. I give you all this splendor, all of this magnificence, all this excellence that you see up here if you just worship me. It's the system. Now, if Satan wasn't saying something right, why didn't Jesus correct him? Why didn't Jesus say, no, that's not true? Because Jesus knew that Satan is controlling the system. Donald Trump is part of the system. What you're seeing with these things in high places, principalities, that's part of the system. He don't control you. Tell us about it. He don't control, he don't control me. He controls the system. And until you break out of the cycle, he wants you to keep having babies, keep you poor, broke, and disgusted. So I can keep telling folk that you ain't going to be nothing. Because as soon as you realize who you are and start to fly, Man, Satan gets mad then, my God. I, if, I could just keep, if I could just keep her where she was, I'd be okay. But that guy done found something. Are you hearing me? Listen, you must get out of the nest and start living by faith. And I'll text today, why is God using the eagle as a metaphor for his children? Why? Is God using a metaphor, the eagle as a metaphor? Metaphor is what is a resemblance of something. He said, why is he doing that? I told you last week that the, the eagle in the scriptures in Leviticus was, on the, was the first one mentioned about being an unclean animal. But here it is that God is using the eagle to show you and I that we are like the eagle. Man, the more I researched that, I was telling Harvey Roby the other day, it's, it's amazing why I have not already began to bring some out about eagles years ago. Because if you go to my office, my office is full of eagles. Here and Capazé. Fanny, Fanny Cannon has given me eagles, and there are others who have brought me eagles. Because they know that's who I, I look to. I, I believe that I'm an eagle. You got to wonder, I, I, I believe I'm an eagle. And, 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 and so they bring these things. And my wife and I, when we were going on trips and we we're driving, and we were just in St. Louis and, and going, going up, up there, you, we just go along the highway and watch to see the birds. Now, the hawk 
is in the eagle family. I think he's a distant cousin. He ain't, he ain't no first cousin. But the Hulk, the Hulk also is a loner. We ride down the street and Lady J, I got to start watching, watching the birds. And she, she said, that one there. You go another mile, there's another one. Hawks also do not get together. And they're just sitting there just as perfect as they could be. So we begin to realize, I begin to realize, why haven't I talked about this bird, this magnificent bird? You know why? This is time now for you to hear about it. I got the right bunch here now. I got that Gideon bunch here now. They see, yeah, yeah. Got the rest of other folks. So, other folks gone. So, it's all right. This is the right folks. Now, this is the right folks. This is the right ones. Now, we, now we go forward now. We can go forward. Isaiah 40 and verse 31. Let's go back there again and hear what the Bible says. Hmm. But they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wing as eagles. They shall run and not be weary, and they shall walk and not faint. Notice what the Bible says. This is King James. This is not New King James says like an eagle. But he says as an eagle because the word as here symbolizes that we are like eagles. But we, this is what he means by this. He means this. He means this. He means this. He means that we have the ability just like an eagle has, to run and not get weary. Some of y'all are so shaky. <laughs> to walk, though things get tough, and not be weary and not faint. Are you following me? And so, as I begin to study this some more, some more I believe God's telling us, he's comparing us to the eagle for reason that we don't even realize. Eagles don't think like chickens. They're not pigeons. I said to you last week, and I'm, I won't go to it again. Eagles don't come to town. You'll never see an eagle downtown. Never. You will never see an eagle downtown. They don't hover and be around folk. They're not crowded with other birds. You got to watch who you associate with. Mm, 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 mm. Eagles don't think like chickens or pigeons. Are you hearing me? I told you, an eagle eats almost anything, eats corn, sticks. An eagle, I mean, I'm sorry, a chicken would eat almost anything, eats corn, eats sticks. And if you ever have visited a chicken place, a chicken eats its own feces. Now, Feces are to be excreted. If you are like a chicken and you're still eating stuff and you're not excreting it, then that's why you are full of stuff. Stuff you should be getting rid of. You keep on eating. You should be you should be getting rid of anger and malice and strife and, and hatred and bigotry. And you keep on eating and talking to folk who want to gossip. That's not how an eagle does. An eagle doesn't eat where chickens eat. Pigeons eat stuff too. I mean, just amazing how stuff these people these things eat. And the eagle says, I can't come down there. Uh, talk to me, talk to me, talk to me. Listen, if you eat what you should release, it weighs you down. If you eat what you should be releasing, and if you keep on eating from other folks' stuff, go home and wash, go home and pull, pull up a chicken, you go home, or, or, or a, a pigeon, go home, let's pick it up. This is, what, this is what they're doing. And then 
Go home and watch the eagle. He sits, waiting for something to come by. <laughs> That's a lie. Camille, that's a lie. Unlike y'all. Now, I don't miss, you, miss up your dinner today. Because some of y'all going around here right now to Popeyes and, and tuck it. I got that. But here it is right now. The eagle eats what's live. Is that right, Holman? I, I research about what he does. Listen. You're walking around eating everything. You eat like chickens. You can't fly. You can't soar like an eagle. You can't. You just can't hang around folk who want to just keep on doing the same stuff. There's a breakout period for you. There's a breakout period. There's a breakout period. Come on, y'all. Little people think like chickens and pigeons. Little people. Eagles. Think like leaders. An eagle can soar high above their problems. Are you hearing me? I told you last week, eagles make love in the air. They go 20,000, 30,000 feet in the air and they hook together. And while they are cascading through the sky. Man, that's something to see there, man. I, I watched them the other night, my daughter today. Them homeboys, and 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 they just they they just twirl through as, as they fall, and then right before they hit the ground, they let go. <laughs> Eagles mate for life, right. meaning what? They don't divorce each other. Can you see why God is trying to utilize that them as a metaphor for you and I? That 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 that, that they, this is an animal that doesn't behave like it's amazing. Eagles don't kill just to kill. You know, sometimes chickens just want to just Eat each other, like some of y'all want to do sometimes. You just eat on each other. No, no, no. An eagle only kills when it's hungry. Oh, y'all kind of quiet. When he is coming down, and and the hawks just look at them. The cardinal, the red bird, the blue jay. The robin, the mockingbird, the wren. They just watch and say, what kind of bird is that? <laughs> that can make love in the air like that. What kind of, what, my God, what kind of bird is that? Jesus, he is amazing to me. They, they all just, all the birds are just watching because he is the prince of the air. He's the one that can do all things. That eagle is not afraid of anything. And bears just look at them. I was walking the morning and being in the hawk family, I see, seen this hawk who's up high in a tree and he just perched there. And you hear two birds just flying around him. Two big, big crows just flying around him. So I, I, I'm, I'm walking and I'm, I'm, I'm looking back and looking back and looking back as I walk. Looking back, looking back, looking back. And, and all of a sudden, uh, they just keep on. And what I assume, I, I, I'm saying that I am a... a uh, uh, what they, that, uh, the bird people are called. What do they call? But 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 listen, I I I, I assume this here that that the hawk was probably too close to their nest, and so that they're trying to to what they're trying to, to tell him get out of here. And so as they come around and do what they did to him, the the, the, the hawk did this. He just went higher. An eagle goes higher than any other bird. No other bird can fly as high as an eagle. So when a saint 
is an eagle. And you are having problems down here on this earth. And folk are bothering you here and there, this and that, but da 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 da. Why don't you just get yourself higher and leave them alone where they are? Because it's obvious that they're just chickens and you need to go higher. So if you stop trying to just argue with them and fight with them, why not just go higher and start to soar? Too many of us sit back and just talk to other folk like we are chickens. No other bird can fly as high as this eagle. Are you hearing me? It's so important that you understand how chickens attack. They attack down low. Michelle said this, when they go low, we go high. <laughs> I like that, amen. And when I read about this eagle canine, I saw that the fact that, hey, maybe what's wrong with many of us is that we are staying too close to the ground. We don't want to fast. We don't want to pray. We don't want to see God, read our Bible. We want to do it. And so we are not flying. So when trouble comes our way, we just get in and just want to fuss and fight with you and call you back and argue back and forth. No, I ain't got time for that. Let me get higher and get above this mess. Eagles fly with their own kind. They don't associate with any other bird. You'll never see them hanging around other birds. They don't do that. You got to watch who you hang around, my friend. Talk to me. Find people who think like you think and dream like you dream so y'all can grow together. Don't waste your time with naysayers and negative people. Eagles have excellent vision and concentration. To catch their prey, they focus with a, like, like a laser with intensity and just set to get it. And they do the same thing when they want these goals. If you want something in your life, set your focus on something you want, just like the eagle. And then don't ever let it off of it. Eagles, eagles' eyes are equipped to see a rabbit two miles away, Mitchell. Two miles away is almost from here to Mill Branch. One research said this, if you would equate that to a human being, that means this, if we had the eyesight of an eagle, we could look, we could be on the 10th floor of a building and see an ant. 10 stories high. Why do you want to watch other folk when your eyes should be on God? And you got your vision with us. No, put your vision on God. Rise up, take your journey. Don't act like other folk act. Are you hearing me? You have to have effort here. And then, I told you last week that I will give you something today that you hadn't heard before about the eagle. Eagles enjoy storms. They enjoy storms. You catch that? They enjoy storms. They go back and they sit and they wait up on a high mountain and see the storm cause come in and they say, oh, here comes one. Let me get ready right now. They mean this by that. Because when, they, when the storm comes, they get a lift from the storm. Y'all kind of quiet today. Y'all kind of quiet. Hey, when, when the storm comes, he wants the storm. He invites them. The storm is for him a challenge. And so as it comes to him closer, he says, I ain't got the flap now. I can just go ahead and soar. So listen, when a storm comes your way, 
The Bible says, think it not strange to a fair child that come your way. This is why God is saying to you and I, we are eagles, because we should not be upset when we have storms in our lives and going through trials, situations. He says, hey, just like the eagle who mounts up his wings and goes through the air, we too, when we have problems in our lives, storms come. Don't let them get you down. Come on and rise up. Come on and get in the air. Come on and soar. They welcome, they welcome a challenge. They're not afraid when the rain begins to come. They're not afraid. I was reading what he said this. He said that when it comes, Camille, he gets higher than the storm cloud. So you've got to get higher than the storm you're experiencing. And God, all they get higher, it's like, I, I got to pray more. I got to fast more. I got to seek God more. And the more I seek God, the higher I'm going to get. Because I know that I cannot avoid a storm. A storm is going to come. So as it comes, just let me get higher, God. Don't let that problem bother me. It's not going to bother my mind because I got this. I got the sword. Some of y'all like, 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 like y'all, y'all chickens today. Like your chickens. Chickens think small. An eagle never has to worry about making love to a chicken. Because a chicken will never get that high. And you should recognize this. You should not even worry about when you are so high and folk down here below you, you why are you worried about him? Mm. Why are you bothered about her when she or him, they are not even in your area? Right, Darling, they are nothing but chickens or pigeons. They're pigeons. They're pigeons. They're pigeons. And you want to cry? You don't forget who you are. Right, Baby, just tell God, God, send the storm so I can get higher. Oh, the storm is on their wings and they, they let them soar. You, you, see, you, see, you see eagles very rarely flapping. Unless they're coming in for something, to get something, or trying to get back in the air. They come down and get their meat, they get, get their food. They can see, they can see, they can see the fish that's in the water and come down and get him and go back up. He ain't stay on the ground. He's getting higher. God is telling you today, it's time for you to get higher. You got to stop thinking like you think. Acting like you act. And then see how God wants to develop you to something better, like the eagle. I'm not done with it. He has so much that he wants to offer. God does. But until you're ready, until you're ready, you're not ready to fly with him. Chickens on the flap so high. Some folks in the Christian world, they flap, but, but that's it. They, they, they ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere. Ha, sha, 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 sha. Ha, da, da, da. Ain't, ain't knocking. But, uh, that, that, ain't knocking it. But, but, but I, I'm knocking when you just flap and you come back down and you still act the same way. <laughs> Something happened in Deuteronomy. 32 and 10, and I'm finishing. Something happened. I want you to get this here today. Something happened. He found him in the desert. I said to you last week, he found you 
in a desert place. He found you in a wasteland. He found you in places where you thought you would not ever come out of. He found you in the backwoods of Arkansas, yes. Mississippi. He found you in the backwoods of Missouri. He found you somewhere where you were living less than. That's right. yes, sir. He found you having one wig and now you got five. He found you. He found you riding on a bus. He found you walking to work. He found you in the wasteland. He found you. He found you in the howling wilderness. He found you. He found you in the howling wilderness. Places where folk were just hollering. Hey, it is the wrong area to be in. It's the wrong area. This is the wrong neighborhood. Get out there. Get out of here. He found you in the howling wilderness. He encircled you. God has chosen you to be his. He circled you to be mine. What's your name, girl? What is it again? Xanity? All right. Who are you coming with today? Okay. All right. Good deal. He found you. And he encircled you. He's pulling you to him. And the more he pulls you to him, he wants you to understand he has more for you. Not just you, Zanity. He has more for all of us. Come on, Kiki. He has more. But you cannot have more as long as you flap like a chicken. Never get there. Can I? If you don't learn to soar like an eagle, you'll never accomplish the things that God got for you. Because too many of us, we've been found, but we want to stay where we were found. Some folk are in some churches that they've been there for years and they won't stay right there. What's your name, girl? Siobhan. And, and, and how do you know that God's by telling you? There's a better thing. So he encircled him. And then what did he do? He instructed you. But when instructions come and you don't obey him. I said earlier, it, it's the obedience. It's how you're thinking. It's so crucial that how God has instructed you and you are afraid to move. It's like your feet is in cement. And you're afraid to step out and see what God has for you. Darling, half of your adventure is going to be a risk. It's a risk to step out and don't know where you're going. What Abraham stepped out not knowing where he was going, but he knew what? Who's leading him? You got to realize something. If God is calling you out, then Sam will step out in reckless abandonment. I'm abandoning everything else. To follow God. You've got to let go of stuff and get out of the cement and step out and see what God has for you. Marcos, we cannot be set in a place where God is saying move and we're saying, I ain't sure. He found you. He found you in a desert, in a wasteland, a howling wilderness. He encircled you. He instructed you. He kept you as the apple. Apple of the eye is, that's, that's, that's that black part that's in your eye. That's the pupil. That's the pupil that's, that's there. And, and that means that, that without that part, oh, see, but the white part ain't about a whole lot about nothing. And the other black part ain't about nothing. But, but don't, don't let a cat regular get on that pupil, though. Mm-hmm. Right, Missy? You got problems then. Don't let it get, don't let, don't let something block the pupil, mm. the apple. Don't let something block that. Then you don't see correctly. And I wonder right now how many of you guys are seeing correctly now because some of it's blocked your pupil. I got you. All right. yeah. Man, y'all like, 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 I better quit right now. Y'all like, y'all say. It's something how God wants you to realize that he wants you to be better. Just as the eagle, 
just above stuff. Just as the eagle doesn't run and get weary. Just as the eagle doesn't faint. Too many people quit, give up, stop. When God is saying, it's time for us to rise up. Verse 11, and I'm finishing. I'll come back and finish this next week. Catch this. As the eagle stirs up its nest, hoovers, hovers over its young, spreading out its wings, taking them up and carrying them out on its wings. I want to show you again next week about the egg tooth. The egg tooth that each chicklet has to have before it breaks through. Each chicklet has to develop an egg to while in the egg. It is that egg tooth that's going to help that eaglet break through the shell. And I'm hearing today in the spirit realm that many of you guys who are in the shell now and need for God to develop you an egg tooth. It's time, Jackie, to break out of the nest that you're in. And, and, and as the nest, I was studying this here, and God said to me, he says, the reason why I stirred the nest up, mother, was because Israel had begun too comfortable. There's so much more that God wants for Zante. And until Zante understand that God has more for Zante. Zante is going to be comfortable where she is. And all of a sudden, he said this to me. He says, when I was leading them, this is God. This is God. Mother, just, just, just happened just the other day. He said to me, he says, when I was leading Israel out, I gave Israel for shade they walked in the sun and never got blistered never got suntan they were black already you know they didn't get no blacker some of y'all dog now y'all was y'all was dog back then too though He said to me, he says, I put over them a cloud in the daytime that they walked and the pillow cloud kept them from the sun. In the desert, it can get to be 120 degrees in the daytime. At nighttime, it can get down as low as 60 or 50. So he said to me, he says, I protected them. I shielded them from everything. And then at nighttime, I had a pillow cloud of fire that kept them warm at nighttime. He said, I sent food to them. I sent sent manna from above. I fed them. Israel got too comfortable. Just like some of y'all. Cain and Hodges. We got comfortable doing what we do. Until I had to stir up the nest. I had to bring about some kind of change. Bring about some problems in their life that can get them out of where they were. Had to make you lose a job. Maybe you got sick. Didn't know why. Maybe you lost your house. Maybe you lost your car. Maybe your husband left. Maybe your wife left. Something happened that God said, I got to shake up the nest. Because if I don't, they're going to stay where they are. And that's not what I called them for. (laughs) 
So I stirred the nest. Yes. Next week, let's hear how he stirred it with the egg tooth. Let's hear next week some more things regarding the eagle and how God, again, resembles them to us. I'll show you something next week about something else the eagle does. He does something also to get his life back together. When it seems like it's over. Oh, you must be reading them. Uh huh. Yeah, he 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 see he got he got a head on me. He does something else when life seems like it's over. He renews itself. Man, if you only knew what God has in you, if you only knew that God has designed your body to renew itself. But you can't eat what you've been eating. You can't drink what you've been drinking. He's designed you something better. And until you get there, you get me, girl? Until you get there, you'll be here instead of here. I say this to you. This is for you right now. I think you're a hawk. It means you're in the eagle family, but I think you want to be an eagle. Hey, hey, hey that's for her, but, but guess what? This is also from you. Because some of you guys are also hawks, but some call it chickens. <laughs> I'm just telling the truth. I mean, you, 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 you got. Chickens, chickens are always angry. Pigeons, pigeons are, are always gossiping. Chickens are always in other folks' business. You, you, you don't see an eagle in somebody's business. No, 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 no. That, so, so if, if you're in somebody's business, you, 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 you're chicken. You're chicken. You're chicken. Chickens don't forgive because chickens keep weight inside them. And if you keep eating stuff, you get weighed down. That's because what? Of unforgiveness. So see, some of y'all are, are chickens. See, 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 the, the guy that you're mad at, your ex, at the club party, and you're mad at him. He's got you in bondage. He's going on with his life. Unforgiveness is like this. It's like it's nothing but poison that you are drinking and expect them to die. That's how chickens act. I promise you, sir, if you learn this series and get, if you get this series and just play it every time a chicken thought comes to you. Chicken thought is, I got, I don't like her. I don't like her. That's a chicken thought. And I just don't like her. What's wrong with, I don't like her. That's a chicken thought. It's a shame that, that somebody can have a thermostat in their house and control the temperature in your house. It's a chicken when you see the girl that your husband went with and she left, he left, left you for her and you see her in the store instead of you going, walking right by her and look like you got something. You see her on, this, on that aisle there, you say, oh, I ain't going that way. That's a chicken attitude. You got to make, you got to make your boyfriend, your husband, your ex, whatever bad man or woman, see that, hey, you missed the eagle. If 
if you if 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 your woman know how to walk your stuff. <laughs> if your man pull a pull a dip if your man you when you when you see her, pull a dip if your man. Hey. What's up? What's up? Hey, how you doing? Get right. Because I'm flying now. I'm flying. I'm flying. I'm flying. I'm flying. I, I, and, and I won't let you bring me down. Because when, when he see you, when he see you walking like that without him, when he see you, he going to call you back and say, hey, what's up with you? Ain't nothing up. Ain't nothing up. I'm just flying high and low. Can I, can, I, can I get me with you? Not until you start beginning an eagle. Because right now you a chicken. I can't hang with chickens. Let's stand, stand, stand your feet. The nest has become too safe for you. The nest has become too secure, too warm. The nest you're in is too warm for you. You can't stay in the nest forever. I wrote this down, Sherry. The nest in the eagle place, Cornelius, is designed to be an incubator. So what God is doing, he's trying to keep you in a place where you'll be an incubator. But catch this, if you stay in the nest too long, it becomes a casket. Cause you're gonna die. And not fulfill the destiny that God called you to. You were developed to, to hatch somewhere. And once you hatched, now let me go and make my own and do some things that I know God called me to do. That's what you were done, Canaan. You were developed in an incubator. If you're not careful, if you're not careful, Tara, Tara, you're not careful. You have a gift, girl. You're not careful. That incubator is going to turn into a casket. You want more out of life. You want to fly higher. That's not for her by herself. No, I'm just, that's all, everybody here. I ain't here by herself. No, no, no. You've been staying where you are too long. Rise up, take your journey. The incubator, the nest, is becoming uncomfortable. Don't let it become a casket. A Christian man lost his home and meal when a flood washed through their hometown. He was broken hearted and discouraged as soon as he surveyed his loss he went into a big depression. It bothered him as he saw all of his earthly beholdings, earthly goods just be wore out. Just then he saw something glittering that was uncovered in the waters. It was gold. It was gold. The disaster he thought had made him a beggar had actually made him wealthy. Y'all catch that? So often, the troubles that we go through strip away things that we cherish, our possessions, to show us there's a better treasure in him. This Christian man, true story, this Christian man thought it was all over. 
all that I worked for has gone down. And then he saw something. And what he saw said that what I thought was trouble has now, be has now become now my prosperity. Stop looking at what's the top of your life as being so much of a disaster and start trying to see in it the silver lining. You lost that job. But well, what is it God was saying to you? See this now today as time for the eagle to soar. Let me find what God has for me. Your head bowed. Your eyes are closed. Today, my brother, my sister, if you're here today, you're saying, Brother Pastor, I felt that today. Because I've had in my life some trouble in my life as well. And I thought it was over. But I need to look now a little deeper and see if there's some gold in this. He's going to bring you forth as pure gold. Brother Pastor, I'm not saved, but I want to be saved today. I need salvation. I need salvation. Brother Pastor, I'm saved, but Brother Pastor, I still need some prayer. I'm in a deep place right now, Pastor. I need some encouragement. I need to hear something. I need somebody to speak in my life today. I need help today. I need help. I need help. I need help. If that's you, you're saying, Brother Pastor, that's me. I need help today. I need help. I need help. That's me. Raise your right hand. Come on. Come on. Raise your hand. Your right hand. Your right hand. I need help. I'm not a saint who's around me because they're only just chickens. I am trying to sow like an eagle. I'm trying to get higher. I'm trying to find where God wants me to be. Your hand back down. Now, if you don't mind, if you're not ashamed, step out. Come, come. Read. As soon as I stop worrying, step out, step out and come. Worrying how the story is. How the story is. I let go and I let die. I let him, I let him, I let him. I let God have his way. Yeah. That's when things start happening. That's when things start happening. And I stopped looking at back 